to Global Viroc and Ski for allowing me to showcase my new technique of ACL reconstruction, my thought process behind it, and how I execute it. So going back to the basic, the footprint of ACL, as we see on the TBL side, it's not circular. It's somewhat rectangular in shape and quite wide than the circular tunnel. And even if you see a normal ACL from the posterior medial portal, you see the attachment of femoral side ACL is also quite huge and it's a fan shape attachment going from superior to the inferior aspect. So the circular tunnels, what we make, may not be able to cover the whole of the footprint. So with some literature, it clearly shows that the TBL footprint mediolaterally is 7 to 16 millimeter and anterior posteriorly is 9 to 19.5 millimeter, taking that it's small mediolaterally, but it has a large footprint anterior posteriorly on the TBL side. Another article in Arthroscopy Technique also shared that the TBL footprint is somewhat circular anteriorly, but as you go posteriorly, it becomes more of a rectangular shaped TBL footprint. And we all might have noticed this while doing total knee replacement. When we remove the ACL, the footprint is quite obviously rectangular in shape and not circular. Even on the femoral side, the footprint is oblique or oval and not circular. And the tunnel which we make may either be covering more of an AM bundle or PL, or sometimes we are in between, but we are unable to recreate the native footprint either on tibia or on femur. With the same thought process, Freddie Fu had popularized the double bundle ACL technique in keeping in point view to enhance the footprint covering both the bundles. But we all know the fate of double bundle ACL and rarely we talk about it nowadays. So whatever graft we are using for single tunnel, how much the graft is filling the native ACL. A nice article in Sarsta in 2013, it shows that semi and gracial is combination is the only graft which is nearing to the femoral attachment of the native ACL and none of the graft semi -t or combined semi -t gracial is or bone patella matches the native tibial footprint of ACL. So these three techniques inside out or outside in and uh, trans tibial technique for femoral tunnel covers only 55% of the native femoral ACL technique and on the tibia it may be a little more because usually we have one size bigger than the femur so it is around 58 to 60 percent native footprint tibial coverage and 55 percent round on the femoral side acl coverage so any change in the shape of tunnel will it be helpful in doing the current acl technique what we do so there was a nice article in 2014 in arthroscopy, which is a cadaveric study where they compared rectangular tunnel with round tunnel ECL reconstruction using bone patella tendon graft. And they said that rectangular ACL reconstructed knee more closely resembles the normal knee in biomechanical behavior. Another article which also compared the rectangular tunnel with circular round hamstring graft and they also mentioned that rectangular tunnel results in significantly lower anterior tibial translation at zero to 15 degree of flexion compared to round tunnel hamstring tendon grafts. And the more flattened the graft, they also mentioned that there is better tendon bone healing in the rabbit model. So that forms a groundwork for the clinical practice, but these studies were cadaveric studies. And uh, another, study which mentions that if you feel more of a native ACL, it will have better control on anterior posterior laxity. So the whole thought process is how can we increase the native footprint of both femoral and tibial side and fill the tunnels with more collagen to have better stability. With keeping this as a thought in my mind, I developed this new technique, which is like single tunnel footprint enhancing and a sort of double bundle like effect ACL reconstruction. We know when we do arthroscopy, we all know that the femoral footprint is not circular. It's always oval shaped with superior inferiorly more compared to anterior posteriorly. And this is what we usually make our anatomical single bundle ACL tunnel position, which is quite uh, acceptable at this point, which uh, no posterior blowout and a good circular tunnel. But if you see, we are yet to create some position where the posterior lateral bundle is attached. 
So these are the special tunnel dilators which we have prepared here with our local vendors, which are rectangular in shape and comes in various sizes like 8 by 8.5, 8 by 9 mm, 8 by 9.5, 8 by 10, and so on. If we have 9, it's 9 by 9.5, 9 by 10. So once you finish your circular tunnel through the same portal, you flex your knee and you can convert that circular tunnel into a rectangular tunnel depending upon what size of graft you have. So this is marked with very in a 5 mm marking so that you know how much you need to go in depth, usually 50 to 20 millimeter, depending on the length of your graft. And slowly, as it is only 0.5 millimeter increment, you tap it gently and go. As it's 0.5 millimeter increment, you, there are less chance of posterior canal blowout. And if you feel like changing its shape little more oblique, you can do it with the next tunnel dilator. So once you finish that, you can clearly see how the shape, circular shape has been converted more into an oval or rectangular on the femoral side, increasing the footprint coverage of the native ACL femoral side. So this is what the original footprint was. This is what we create with a circular tunnel anatomical ACL reconstruction. This is what my new technique with a rectangular tunnel dilator will have a near normal native ACL footprint. I have done this one on cadaver also to showcase my work. So this is what we usually do, uh, a circular tunnel, but then if we convert it into a, so if we convert it into a rectangular tunnel, you will see how the tunnel increases the footprint. Now on the TBL side, we also know that the footprint is not circular. It's also a bit rectangular in shape and such a huge big footprint. Some may recommend using double bundle if it's a 14 millimeter or more, but practically we all, means I have stopped doing double bundle. So this is what a good anatomical single tunnel in the center of the tibial footprint we do routinely. Now with my technique of tunnel dilatation, if suppose the graft is nine millimeter, initially you take the circular tunnel of 8 mm and then dilate it with 8.5, 9, 9.5, only anterior posteriorly and not mediolaterally. So you need to little angulate your punch so that you remove only the posterior aspect of the TBL tunnel and not anything anteriorly. As you see here, my punch coming from the lower pole of the tunnel to entering intra-articular on the tibia. So once you finish your SIGI, tunnel dilatation, you'll see the shape of the footprint completely change from circular to a somewhat rectangular in footprint and covering more of the native footprint on the TBL side as well. Now the process comes about which kind of graph will fit in well into this tunnel. Actually, you can use bone patella, but then you'll have to do a lot of carpentry to fit it. So I thought, why not to use our so before I go to the graph philosophy, the same thing I have done on the cadaver, you little angulate your tunnel posteriorly and you will remove the posterior aspect of tibial tunnel only without damaging any anterior cortex of the femur. And once you remove that tunnel, you see how beautiful the footprint of the tibia seam covering nearly normal native ACL tibial footprint. So the thought process of using a semiti and gracialis graft in this was, uh, I combined both the graphs. If suppose I have a nine mm diameter graph, the initial tunnel drill should be eight millimeter. And then with the tunnel dilator, I dilate it to eight by 10, which means eight is mediolaterally and 10 anterior posteriorly. Now I have a graft of nine millimeter and a tunnel of eight by 10 millimeter. Being a soft tissue graft, it will squeeze on mediolaterally and it will expand anterior posteriorly, thereby taking the shape of the rectangular tunnel using a semiti and gracialis graph. And you can fix it very well with the routine implants of suspensory fixation on FEMA and your screw or suspensory fixation if you want on the TBL side. So once you fix and you do, then you see how we are covering maximum footprint on the FEMA right from the posterior lateral to the anterior medial aspect, even on the tibia you cover the whole footprint and there is no tunnel graft mismatch seen. This is another case where it's viewed from the anteromedial portal where you see the anterior aspect 
of the graph going medially and the posterior aspect of the graph going laterally somewhat a double bundle like now this is what a uh, double bundle like effect will be seen when you view the same graph from posterior medial portal and you see when i extend the knee in this position viewing from posterior medial portal the posterior lateral bundle somewhat getting taut and anterior medial is somewhat getting lax and vice versa when i flex the knee the posterior lateral bundle is getting lax and anterior medial is getting taut so this is somewhat a double bundle like i'm not saying exactly double bundle but this is footprint enhancing so most of the literature i have read they are doing it on the femoral side uh, rectangular tunnel but i have not seen or i might have missed uh, reading that anything has been done on the tibial side i think the reason for that could be it may cause impingement or sometime the fracture on the anterior cortex but as i told you you are removing only the posterior aspect of the bone from the tibia so it forms quite an oblique tunnel and there is no impingement at all even after you fix your tunnel as you see complete extension and there is no impingement in the couple of videos which i am showing here even on cadaver if you see the anterior medial bundle is taut and as i showed you the anterior half of the graph will go medially and the posterior half will go laterally so will form some sort of double bundle like effect so is and that the post op x ray of the patient which shows a uh, very well fixed with screws and the intact cord text so how much increase in the surface area i can expect it's a simple mathematical calculation if you are using a 9 mm circular diameter your coverage will be 63% and if you are converting the same 9 mm graft into 8 by 10 then it's 80 uh area is 80 so it's basically increasing 25% of footprint coverage on both the tibial and the femoral side so is there any clinical studies done in literature yes in this 2020 the article in casta says that they have done mri finding second look arthroscopy of both the rectangular as well as the conventional round tunnel so they found the oval femoral tunnel technique yielded significantly better knee function and knee laxity restoration and more mature acl graft than the round femoral tunnel technique another article recently in 2021 also shows that the rectangular rounded tunnel technique can create a larger bone tunnel and achieve superior clinical results than the conventional round anatomical single bundle acl reconstruction the same thing my paper has been accepted and published in arthroscopy technique recently the only thing difference with the other papers is that i have done the same on the tibia also and the most of the surgeons they have done only on femur so in conclusion i feel this is a single tunnel so you have no detrimental effects of double bundle only the shape change in the shape of tunnel and no additional tunnel is required increases the footprint by nearly 25% so footprint enhancing more collagen distribution for better coverage of both the bundles hence a double bundle like not exactly double bundle and it's more anatomical because it increases the stump healing area and will add most rotational stability as well because we are creating more of a pl bundle so more stable same surgical step except change in tunnel dilator so same surgical time less learning curve as surgery friendly and you can use same implants hence it's same cost thank you Thank you.